So, after watching a lot of reviews, you finally decided it's time to upgrade to the latest RX 7800 XT. And what you find is this. The ASRock Steel Legion RX 7800 XT. Now, we actually bought one and we're going to test this one out and see if this is a good card for you. But before we do, can you hit that like button and let's go unbox this thing. ASRock RX7800 XT Steel Legion comes with a white color and with that urban camo pattern which is usually the Steel Legion theme. It has three fans with the usual vent through design, a metal backplate as ARGB which is programmable via the software, a lid switch as well if you want to manually override a lid on or off. Although it has no BIOS profile switch, but that's fine. It's an overclock edition, which means it's both clocks are higher than the AMD spec. It has 2520 MHz versus the AMD spec of 2430, which is essentially a 3.7% overclock. And it has a around a 4% overclock as well on the game clocks. It only requires two 8-pin power connector and ASRock recommends at least an 800 watt power supply if you're going to use this guy. To test the ASRock RX 7800 XT Steel Legion, we're going to be playing Warzone at native 1440p in the Almazra map, which we know is a really GPU demanding map. Now, disregard the FPS numbers for now, we'll be doing a separate video dedicated on the RX 7800 XT's actual game performance on several of our competitive games. So, if you want to see that, hit that subscribe button let's move on to the actual testing okay first up is a stock performance now in here try to focus on the metrics of our gpu power temperature and maybe the fan rpms i'll put the fan rpm here for anyone who wants to know how it behaves now gpu power in our gameplay is usually Bruh. at 217 watts maybe more and it's bouncing between 240 and 250 and the lower in temperature is usually at 56 degrees although it does end up at 58 degrees sometimes in the gulag basically there's no difference in performance you can still see in here that our gpu pushes the power even more overall the maximum temperature that we got throughout our test is about 58 degrees maximum total board power is 277.62 watts max fan speeds is 1667 rpm and our maximum shader clock for the stock configuration is at 2617 megahertz let's try out doing an undervolt on this card so in here we've just applied an automatic undervolt from the radeon adrenaline software it basically just slims it off a little bit uh, about 25 millivolts from the stock 1150 gpu power in here is a little bit lower which is sometimes you may notice that when it still reaches 270 watts though but probably not as bad no. on gpu intensity scenarios it pushes the power really high up there and the temperature reaches 58 degrees and go lag the power is slightly lower overall compared to our stock configuration overall maximum temperature in the setup still is at 
58 degrees. The maximum total board power is at 277.44 watts. Maximum fan speed at 1651 RPM. And our maximum shader clock is at 2641 megahertz, which is actually higher compared to our run with the stock configuration. Okay, now let's try out a custom undervolt setup. Now, I would just probably drop it down to 1000 millivolts from uh, 1150 stock. And we've tested this out. This is a stable. We've also made a custom fan setting in here, like every other car that we have in our gameplay testings. So here's the result. GP power is significantly lower on non-intensive and it could go lower than 200 watts on indoor or basically if you're on a not GPU ball neck scenario outdoors and on like bigger landscape and wider shots we can see that the GP power is usually at around 220 to 240 watts which is a significant difference compared to our previous two other setups temperatures in here are pretty good usually below 50 degrees and this is because we've got a, that custom fan settings and because of that we also have fan speeds that can be high like 2000 rpm i mean this doesn't really bother me because i wear headphones you can probably tune this down if you want our gpu clocks in here actually reaches 27 12 megahertz this card is only spec at 25 20 megahertz so overall the maximum temperature in this tastes pretty good at 50 degrees maximum total board power is at 264.83 watts that's a maximum although we know during the test it's usually hovering between 220 or 240 maximum fan speed is at 21 19 rpm which is expected as i said you can tune that down if that's too high for you and our maximum shader clock as mentioned actually reaches 2730 megahertz and that's a big jump compared to our previous two other testing setups it's pretty impressive by just having a slight undervolt bringing it down to 1000 millivolts and when we compare the three setups using our call of duty modern warfare benchmark this sweet and just focus on the GP power maybe the temperature you would notice that there's a huge difference in terms of GP power when you look at our manual undervolt compared to the automatic undervolt and the stock configuration of the ASRock RX-17 and XT Steel Legend. Now fan speeds is high as I mentioned on our custom tune but you could tweak this if you want to bring it down and this could have a factor on your overall temperature alongside the lower total board power with our custom undervolt. From our experience, the ASRock RX7800 XT Steel Legend is actually a good card. Initially, we wanted to go with the Sapphire Pure model because it's also white and we mostly purchased Sapphire cards here in our channel. But the stocks on that one were still due to arrive and it's a bit expensive at 1033 new zealand dollars so i ordered the steel legion instead as it was available on stock and it was cheaper at 1012 new zealand dollars i'll put the us dollar equivalent here at the time of purchasing this also comes with a free game of starfield you know if that matters to you and one thing to note as well is that the asrock card comes with a three year warranty versus two years if i would have purchased a sapphire card now that's something to consider and this is our very first asrock card that we purchased with our own money and i actually like this one we'll be doing more intensive tests with the rx 7800 xt including a live shrink test so if you're interested in that subscribe to the channel boys and we'll see you in the next one